Right, we'll touch on a few other things as well. Because obviously we can't load the knee yet, it's day 11. What we can do though is get them working on a hip because remember the hip's gonna control the knee. Now, as with most knee pain, most knee surgery, the first thing that's gonna go is the quads, the second thing that's gonna go is the hips, okay? So doing glute work or hip work is so important right now while she's waiting to be able to do weight bearing single leg squats and squats and things like that she makes sure that she's working on her hip because if we go do that stuff and she's missed this then your knee's going to roll in and she's going to start getting some weakness and some all sorts of trouble so clams is going to be a really good one she just needs to make sure that she's got 90 degrees so if you're at home and you've got this sort of problem you've got to make sure you get a sort of a 90 degree bend here before you start doing this the thing with clams especially get some activation especially when you've got deactivation messaging going up from knee pain and surgery, it's really hard to try and activate normally. So she's gonna to have to use a little bit of help with her heels. So she's gonna push her heels together for me, Kim. So you're gonna squeeze those heels together, which actually gives you activation straight at the top here. And then she's gotta think less about the knee opening. She's gotta think more about clenching her butt cheeks together, right? To try and get external rotation, which will then bring her knee up. So if she's pushing down and squeezing here, she's gonna get range here. Now. I don't really mind how far you go as long as you're getting the activation here. She's just gonna make sure her hip or pelvis doesn't move, okay? So that's gotta stay stacked there. So she's only doing ball and socket work. She's only doing this at a hip and she's doing it from that and that. Think of like a, like a clam shell, think of like when you're opening a clam, okay? That's the front of the clam. The back is the hinge point. So her hinge points are here and here. That's where she needs to drive open the hip there's your external rotation. So that's an important one for her, and it helps with her knee control when she walks, it fires up here, it actually makes the knee feel better when she's walking. The other one is her prone lift and her side raise. Let's have a look at the side raise first though. So if she straightens her leg, I call these the Jane Fondas because that's sort of almost looking what she used to do back in the day, eh? Is I want you to try and keep your legs straight, Kim. So she has to, this is a good one because you can work on a quad, so keep that knee straight, and then trying to lift that by using her glute med in a bit of TFL, but mostly her glute med. So to try and make sure it's more glute med, she needs to sort of perhaps just roll forward a bit and keep that leg behind her rotated down so she knows she's getting this one done. And again, that's gonna be helpful with the glute med with her walking to keep her active through that glute med, which helps her pelvis as well. Remember, you wanna have external rotation for the knee, you wanna have glute med controlling the pelvis, and all that work up here assists what's going on down here. All right, so it makes her knee recovery faster, better. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. And then the glute max, of course. So go onto your front for me. And that's just trying to get proper activation through the back of the hip. A few of flat flat for me. I think the thing with this is, is making sure that you know, Kim's very dominant in her lumbar extensors. So we've got to make sure that she's not doing back extension all the time to try and raise her leg. So if this, if you just straighten that leg for me, Kim. Okay, cool. She's got to try and clench her quad for me first. So making sure she's lifting the leg with a straight knee, really clench there, and then trying to use her glute max to just gently float her knee up off the floor without too much work in. Now, she's going to have to work hard at it because she's so used to using a bit of dominance here. She's going to have to work really hard in her core to stop her back going into this big anterior tilt when she does hip extension. So when her brain says, raise your leg, use your glute, She's got to not sort of fire up her lower back to help at all. And that might be, this is one of the things you might find that you go, okay, I need to address that and sort that out while she's getting a knee better. So we sort of fix this pattern of movement here. She's a bit more stable in here. So when she goes through deadlifts and squats down the track, she's not doing it all here and getting a sore overloaded lower back. She's actually properly getting hip work done there. Okay. So the weight bearing stuff that we are doing in week two is basically single leg stance and then doing calf raises because we can't load this surgical knee up. It's only week two and she's already doing the bike and she's walking to and from places but she's not walking for fitness and that's one thing we've had to sort of try and stop with Kim is make sure you can't go and walk for fitness right now. Your fitness is now the bike the walking is just for trying to get the walking pattern better and just going to and from places. So her low bearing stuff is learning how to get better balance on her leg. Now you'll notice on the right leg, so if you go onto your right leg for me, Kim, so this is this is her okay, good leg, non surgical She has had surgery on this leg back in the day, but this one, if you watch this, there's a little bit of wobble, which is normal, okay? So she's got a bit of ankle wobble there. If you look on the left one, 
When she tries to weigh a bear on that, do you see that roll there? Okay, so there's a lot more movement. See that movement going on there? A bit of shaking going on. Now, some of that is not, oh, I've lost how to balance my leg. It is feedback going up to the brain. It's almost like a circuit breaker cutting in her brain trying to control her knee, and a lot of that's coming from the hip. So you can see why we're working on the hip is to try and get this knee nice and stable and tell that brain how to balance on one leg. Plus, go back to the other leg for me, she only does that for about sort of 20, 30 seconds. Plus, she's actually trying to just get some conditioning in that knee. Being able to load bear down on those tissues again gets that whole thing stronger, but she can't do any more than that. Okay, single leg body weight is the max she's doing this week. Now, it seems like pretty low level and pretty pathetic, but it makes a massive difference for her walking and getting around this week. And already she's come in walking pretty much almost normal. So that's your single leg work, and then it's the calf raise work. So two feet only, we don't want to do in calf raises a single leg just yet. The thing about calf raises, is one, you need to get the calf going, and it's one thing you can do because you're not hammering in the knee. But when she does a calf raise, we're trying to teach her brain to actually switch on her quad when she goes up onto her toes. When things get unstable, she's got to turn that quad on and not let it go. So if you, you can put that for a better balance. You can use that for a better balance. She goes up onto her toes, right? And you think, oh yeah, calf raise, that's pretty normal. But she's got to really keep her knees straight. So when she goes up, she has to then learn how to tense this. So it's isometric work, quad, and then up and down the calves. So down again for me. So she's just going up and down for reps on her calves. Where you go. And the good thing about that also is when she does calf raises, it acts as a pump. So it's pumping up fluid out of her leg, through her knee, and back through that lymphatic system. Okay, So people with a bit of swelling in their legs, this works really well to try and pump that fluid away. And it's sort of the stuff you're going to get with your walking upstairs, but she's not allowed to do that. So there's her two sort of exercises today. There's a whole lot more, but that's the ones I wanted to show you. We'll see Kim. Um, next week, but I'm going to show her you show you her progress in about three or four weeks time.